Puja. So let me introduce our head of innovation, R&D from Turtle Technologies, Bangalore. She is an engineering graduate with a degree in biomedical engineering, MS computer engineering, as well as clinical research from the University of Cincinnati, Cincinnati, USA. DOZI as an organization is one of the fastest growing uh, organizations uh, uh, specializing in a medical technology field, not only in India, but also beyond. DOZI is India's first contactless remote patient monitoring solution. And as far as I could understand, they have a growing presence in over 370 hospitals, covering as many as 40 districts across the nation. And they are now expanding beyond the Indian shores, even to the continent of Africa. So I have Ms. Pooja here with us today, and it will be indeed a pleasure to hear about the success story of DOZI from their head of innovation and clinical research. The floor is over to you, Ms. Kadimbi. Welcome to our session, and we look forward to a very enriching talk from your end. Yeah, uh, thank you so much, uh, Ms. Ganguly, and uh, I must appreciate uh... All right, great. Uh, so as far as, uh, you know, I, it's great to hear some of the speakers that were speaking about how to make purchase decisions, how to make uh, vendor evaluation decisions, and all of it uh, fixates on this essence of quality. How do we ensure good quality? Uh, and that is the fundamental basis towards patient safety to a large extent, right? Uh, doctors study for so many years and undergo so many trainings to ensure that they can deliver quality healthcare. Uh, hospitals uh, undergo accreditations like uh, NABH and JICO and, and all of these uh, accreditations, which is from an audit perspective, finances have to face audits. And so all of it is focusing around quality and quality is really important in healthcare because it's directly connected to life and death in many cases. So I'll be presenting, you know, a little bit about uh, DOZI as a case study from uh, the FDA journey that we are on. Uh, we've completed one of the first milestones and touch upon quality management systems from a medical device perspective, because at the end of the day, there's a lot of documents. One of the speakers mentioned, you know, tenders and uh, writing specifications. And a lot of times you'll see people say, we want a CE device or we want an FDA certified device. Uh, where does that come from? You know, it's not just about, oh, we want an American device. It comes from, uh, there are very rigorous agencies in place that take over quality. And so how do you get a regulatory certification or what does it mean for a product to have that? So the fundamental basis is before you even apply as a product, you have to be capable as a company. So there's certain things called a QMS system. I'm sure everyone's familiar with it and different organizations follow something very differently. So on the left that you can see, right, we have something called ENISO 13485, which is a European standard for a quality management system throughout the life cycle of medical devices. Mm -hmm. Then the second one, which is 21 CFR part 820, is specifically for the uh, US FDA. And then India themselves have a ISO 13485 standard, which many different countries along the world follow. Uh, a lot of manufacturers uh, have something called ISO 9001, which is a very production specific standard. Um, and as you can see, you have multiple standards and I could fill like probably 10 pages of this at a manufacturing level, at an accreditation level, at a hospital level, at a training level. Level, right, uh, but because medical device is so specialized and it's uh, uh, the safety is so paramount, there is specific standards, and roughly all of them, right, talk about this. The graphic that you see over there, which is how do you ensure quality? How do you ensure continuous improvement? How are you monitoring what you do? Are you doing what you say? Are you saying what you do? You know, all of them have these same principles and essences packaged you know, in, in slightly different formats and slightly different requirements. But if you comply to a quality, manage, quality management standard and get certified for that, then it's much easier for your products to go through global standards of certification. And frankly, most of the uh, medical devices, you cannot certify a product without being certified as a company. So 
I don't expect you to read anything on the right. It's just put up there also. It's one of my favorite uh, resources, Emogo's uh, website on pathways for different countries and whatnot. But this is just to show you. So from a CE, which is Europe, and we see those marks on the devices all the time, there's something called a rule-based classification, which is, you know, is it in contact with the body or not? Yes, no. Uh, if it's in contact, what's the duration? What is the risk? Where is the area? Is it life-saving? You know, all of these uh, based on a patient-centric approach to risk uh, that gets classified into devices. And of course, the scrutiny and the burden of proof that you have to show just increases with the, in, you know, the higher classifications. Uh, so here it's like a reverse, a class one device is, uh, you know, like a something like a wheelchair or something, uh, a non-electrical wheelchair or something uh, like a, a tongue dipstick or depressor. And then all the way up to class three devices, which are your uh, knee implants, your ventilators. Um, and, and when I say it takes anywhere between four months to 12 months, that's assuming you have things in place. So because you have something called a notified body in CE, right? A lot of people you'll say, uh, even, even newer companies like ourselves saying we're in the process of CE. Um, what this basically means is we are dependent on an, uh, a timeline from a notified body or an agency. And so right now with uh, things in Europe and COVID and all of that, there's a lot, there's a long line. So getting an appointment sometimes is challenging. Um, and uh, depending on which class of device you are, of course, that it takes more time. You have to spend a lot Lot more efforts on clinical studies and so on. Uh, similarly, you have uh, India, which uh, was largely, you know, uh, the, this is a Drugs and Cosmetics Act that I'm sure everyone's familiar with, um, but it's very hard and now it's become medical devices also, right? But everyone here knows that a cosmetic product is very different Ms. from Pujan? a pharmaceutical. Yeah. Hello, you're frozen. Hello, did I freeze? Uh, just, uh, just for a minute. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll just start. So uh, as far as India goes, um, it, we fall under the Drugs and Cosmetics Act and now the Drugs, Cosmetic and Medical Devices uh, grouping, which anyone here would know that a cosmetic product is very different from a pharmaceutical product and is very different from something like an implant, is very different from a Band-Aid. And so it's this overarching thing that was not easy for the government to streamline. And so I've actually shown the journey of how India is moving from a largely a uh, semi or unregulated market where we are heavily dependent on imports to having our own system uh, to be able to have global quality products, not just for India, but for the world. And so roughly they have a classification metric as well in ABCD, which is risk-based and based on similar other products. Uh, you can, you get your quality system certified, you do a submission, and then there's an inspection. For A and B, it comes under the state. For C and D, it comes under the central. Some uh, devices like the lower classes, you have things like the notified body from the C perspective. In other cases, the center will directly evaluate it. And finally, you get licensed. Uh, before this, there was a voluntary, non-mandatory registration for devices that many companies, including Dozy, complied with. Um, and uh, just like with the CE, many of us are in the queue. Uh, from last I heard, they have over 8,000 files pending. So good luck to the government for clearing them before October. Um, now we come to the FDA, you know, which is the pathway and the case study that I'll be talking about. Uh, the FDA is an interesting uh, classification metric because they have a pathway called the 510K, which is based on the fact that do you have a predicate device? You know, like if, if there's, uh, let's take a, a thermometer, for example. Uh, if there exists a thermometer, a mercury thermometer uh, made by say company A and company B has the same mercury thermometer, they've upgraded say the glass and they've done Done some changes to make it um, maybe safer, maybe easier to read. But in essence, the principle is the same, right? It's using the temperature differential and the expansion of mercury to tell temperature. And um, to that extent, the uh, FDA says, okay, if you can claim that you are just like this product and show us how you match all of these, we'll kind of create an accelerated pathway. Uh, so that is what uh, and all predicate-based 510K devices, they come with the term FDA cleared. The only uh, devices that get FDA approved are the ones that go for a pre-market 
uh, approval, which is uh, implants, very high risk device, as you can see from this uh, waterfall graphic. And uh, the FDA really is trying to focus, the US FDA is really trying to focus on uh, lowering the burden on uh, medical device companies on uh, to get products out to consumers faster. So they've come up with some special regulations for certain products like um, CPAPs, for example, which is like, hey, just give us these certificates, do these tests, and we'll clear you. Um, and, uh, and, and also they have this option called a de novo, saying if you're a low risk device, like you're a very innovative device and you're a low risk device, uh, uh, even if you don't find a clear predicate, maybe there's a way for us to evaluate you without requiring, you know, long-term studies. So let's get into what DOZI is. So DOZI, as uh, our host kindly mentioned, is uh, focuses on being the next generation of patient monitor. We do have a first in uh, class components around using micro vibration technology. So uh, people may be familiar with the term ballistocardiography, where ballisto means vibration or motion, cardio is heart, and graphy is plotting it. And so utilizing the, by keeping the sensor under the bed, like you see in the graphic, we're able to pick up not just the movement of the patient on the bed, but to isolate the individual micro vibrations from the organs and pick up things like heart rate, um, respiratory rate, and now a first world uh, blood pressure uh, as well, and many more exciting things to come. And fundamentally, monitoring is just one component, right? Without getting the information to the right people at the right time, uh, this just collecting data has no medical or clinical relevance. And so really what we uh, pride ourselves on being is an early warning system that allows seamless sharing of patient information across platforms to whoever requires it and managing a high workload of patients with smart alerts and triaging. Um, and so overall delivering a solution to help enable better care, patient care and lower the burden on healthcare providers. So to this extent, right, this is, it's purposely kept as a busy slide. Like uh, Dozy has grown a lot in the last few years. Um, and we are in the process of continuing to chase our objective of being a world-class company and world-class products. And so we have a 510K clearance for um, a couple of the features, which is the hate, uh, heart rate and respiratory rate, where there was clearly a predicate device. We have our ISO certification in place and uh, a lot of things that you see over here, like ROHS is around the materials themselves not being hazardous. Uh, and uh, it's on a like a material chemical composition side. The IEC 60601 standards that you see is all around electrical safety, which is a major, major uh, risk, right, for any electrical equipments in a hospital setting. Uh, GCP uh, falls under, you know, good clinical uh, practice specific to uh, human subject research and clinical trials. So we ensure that we are maintaining the highest uh, standards with respect to that. And uh, very important for any of uh, my, you know, IT management folks in the audience is we have IAC 27001, which is a new standard uh, around information security management, because as uh, devices are getting more connected. We have wearables, we have cloud, all of these things. We need to ensure that we're not missing out on uh, the standards that may have not always been in the healthcare industry. And yes, publications, presentations, all of this is just to show it's a commitment to quality. And uh, the way you ensure or build trust is by third parties and external factors being able to evaluate your work and what you're doing. So this comes down to the fundamental question, right? Why should we bother monitoring beyond hospitals and ICUs? So uh, I think I may have some of all these stakeholders here, but uh, if everyone is focusing on high quality and impact, right? Data is king today. Uh, being able to make quick decisions and right decisions and back that up is very important from a compliance perspective. Um, so manual spot checks, not only do they, do they put a burden on healthcare providers and nurses to constantly go and document and disturb the patient, uh, international level studies have shown that it often misses events. There's more emergencies, there's more um, hospital-based adverse events, uh, more readmissions when you only have manual spot checks. So, you know, the whole model of DOZI is once we identified what the problem was, we're like, you know, we need to get all these features that I mentioned uh, in one place. 
And so to this extent, this is where we talked about, you know, the customized alerts. You, at one glance, you should know which patients are sicker, which ones are doing fine, not just spot checks, but being able to see the trends and patterns and vitals, which a lot of clinicians told us is key to clinical decision-making. Um, and we reviewed some of the hospital and accreditation standards that focus on, um, you know, better uh, evidence-based decision-making to create this. Uh, this is not an accreditation, but we actually worked with, there was a third party company that looked at what could the impact be, right? And so even when you're purchasing a product, you wanna see, will it help my patients? Yes, it does. Will it help my care providers? Uh, that should also be a checkbox. Will it help me, you know, reduce the healthcare burden or reduce my operating costs? And, uh, you know, what is the benefit? You have to look at it holistically uh, as different stakeholders. Um, and so part of this, right, like why Dozy 370 and growing family uh, over three lakh, almost like now um, two lakh plus patients have been monitored. Um, and uh, the reason the hospitals trust us is because of things like this, right, having the quality management system in place, being able to get an FDA um, clearance for uh, some products, being able to demonstrate uh, proper impact and compliance to the highest standards. And not just this, the next generation will be about getting into home. I'm sure there are many hospitals here that are focusing on how do we monitor patients at home? How do we expand it to that? COVID has accelerated things in that, uh, that side of things as well. But uh, we want to be able to offer that continuum of care at home. Now, why am I talking about all these different features, right? Like why, why am I mentioning all the products and features of Dozy? Is because if you, there's a lot of strategy involved in getting a, something like an FDA clearance. If you apply for everything all at once, saying I want this feature, I want that feature, I want home, all the 10 family products together, the likelihood of you getting a certification is very low. You always have to start with simple steps, establish yourself as a company, establish your product and your quality system and build on that. So from an FDA pathway, right? So we have, right now we have heart rate, respiratory rate and occupancy uh, cleared by the FDA. Uh, we've done you know, studies on all the parameters that you see mentioned, but uh, obviously once we, uh, in India, you have different beds. Hospitals want to mount things on the bed, on a wall, by the patient bedside. So uh, there are larger form factors. There's, you know, we take in inputs from customers and we build in some customization. So we'll be getting what is called a special 510K pathway, which is, uh, which you can get in as short as 30 days, uh, saying that the core uh, vital parameters are the same. We're just improving the form factor and ensuring that we're able to get the uh, claimed uh, vital parameters uh, even better. And then, of course, the contactless blood pressure that I mentioned will fall. We are uh, uh, having a pre-submission meeting uh, probably with the FDA soon around this to see if we can use what they call a split predicate, which is using our own dozy device as the predicate for the ballistocardiography and uh, an established other system from a, a BP calculation perspective. I am so sorry to interrupt you. I'm sure yeah. this is super interesting actually yeah. for us. But unfortunately, we are overshooting. Then, sure. Yes. Just give me so, one minute to wrap up. Yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, so this is basically the pathway in which we will follow to get the uh, all all of the features that doctors have told us they wanted and hospitals they wanted covered. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions uh, on this and as to what you know, how do certification pathways matter from a decision making or a per procurement perspective. Um, yeah, sorry for going over time, but that's it. No, that's okay. Uh, we could feel your passion. And I'm sure uh, that uh, Josie would be able to give us a lot of solutions which uh, might help in uh, remote patient monitoring, which is, of course, the in thing for today. And uh, we've had one uh, run of COVID. We don't really know if we have another or maybe a different pandemic. But anyways, remote monitoring is uh, very important, and I congratulate you on the groundbreaking work that your company is doing. There is one specific question which was directed to you uh, from your um, discussion. Uh, one of the participants want to understand if this is MRI compatible. Uh, that's a great question. Uh, this is not MRI compatible uh, at the moment because there are some metal components for uh, sure from that perspective, but that is mm -hmm. something definitely worth uh, exploring uh, from a monitoring perspective in there. But that's a great question. Sure. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Pooja.
and uh, we wish those